Now for our story. It was a gray day with a sharp, cold wind blowing. Angry gusts swirled the yellow leaves across the driveway at the side of the Lane farmhouse, and Lefty Lock and Chrysanthemums bent their heads meekly, struggling against the fence. But inside, the house was cheerful enough. Aunt Mary had been tempted to light a fire in the fireplace, but there was something about having a great fire in the daytime which always struck her as extravagant, except on special occasions. Besides, the kitchen was warm, and that's where she was sitting. She had the ledger with the egg account spread out on the kitchen table and was posting numbers in its strong, neat handwriting. Then she heard a car drive up. Glancing out the window, she saw David Bowman get out and come toward the house. He looked grave and rather worried. A few minutes later, he was established in a chair drawn up close to the stove. Uh, nice and cozy in here, Mary. Yes, isn't it? I notice I sort of gravitate to the kitchen as winter time comes near. Well, the kitchen is the center of the house. Mm. But Sarah wouldn't think of letting me sit in ours. She always behaves as if she'd been invaded if I so much as set foot in it. <laughs> it's her very own to me. <laughs> yes, that's it. Mm. David, is something troubling you today? Or is it just this dreary weather we're having? Well, Mary, I didn't intend to come out here looking like the last rose of summer, but frankly, I do have something on my mind. I thought so. I hope it's nothing serious. I'm afraid it may be, Mary. Quite serious. Judge Willoughby came in to see me today. Oh? You know how Hiram is, Mary. As honest as they come. Honest and straightforward. Doesn't beat about the bush. I should say not. That's why he came directly to me about Kip. About Kip? You told him she was back? No, I didn't tell him. But somebody phoned him in the district attorney, General Craig. Told him Kip was over at the Huntsville Sanitarium. You see what that means, don't you? Well, you know, David, I, I'm not sure that I do. The district attorney intends to indict Kip for perjury. Oh, David. That's his will. That's what I told Judge Willoughby. But it seems the law has to take its course regardless. Not that I'm saying Kit shouldn't pay the penalty for what she did. No, of course not. Uh, I suppose I made a mistake bringing her back to the state right now. Perhaps I should have made arrangements at some sanitarium in Miami. But to tell the truth, I forgot all about the custody suit and Kit's part in it at the time. I simply thought it would be best for her to be near home where I could look after her. Well, that's only natural. I'd forgotten there'd been talk of a perjury indictment myself, although we discussed it at the time. When a person's here, you... Well, you just don't think of things like that. Well, we'll have to think of it now. I wonder, David. Hmm? The fact that the custody suit and all that about Lisa Fenner's baby came so soon before Kip's illness. Yeah. Do you suppose Kip was already ill then? I mean, she might not have done such a thing in a normal state of mind. Very likely, Mary. Yes, yeah, she was very likely already cracking up then. Well, then, couldn't that be pointed out to the district attorney? It might make a great difference. She certainly did behave rather irrationally at times. Maybe the mental breakdown had already started. It's such a difficult thing to prove, to be sure about. But for her to have to go through a trial right now, surely, David, they could delay it just for a while. From what Hiram said, I doubt if the DA will be inclined to do that. What about Dr. Larry, David? If he were to intervene, it might help. Mm -hmm. I'll have to find out just how much power a doctor has to protect a patient in a situation like this. You see, Mary, I've had such hopes for Kit's recovery. It could make a great difference in that girl's whole future if she came out of this with a, with a new perspective. Oh, yes. If this doctor is able to find out the causes, the reason why Kit developed as she did, and give her, or rather bring out in her, a different philosophy toward life. I believe he might if he were left alone. But this perjury thing may upset the whole treatment. Might even send Kit further back. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's a shame, David. Yes, it certainly is. If only it hadn't come up just now. In another month or two, Kit might have been well enough to stand it. 
to take it in her stride. David, uh, you didn't say who it was who telephoned the judge. Did he tell you? No, he didn't, because Hiram didn't know who it was. You mean whoever it was didn't give his name? Apparently not. Hmm. That's odd. Yes, it is. I can't imagine he'd do a thing like that. I hate to think that... Oh, no, no matter how Ben tells it feels, I, I can't believe he'd do such a thing, knowing what it might mean to his own daughter. I thought of Ben, too. But Hiram says it wasn't Ben's voice. It was somebody he didn't know. I see. Mm, anyway, the damage is done now. Yes, David. I can't believe they'd take a girl as ill as Kitty and hold her accountable for something she did months ago. And it might mean destroying all hope of a recovery. You wouldn't think so. But according to Hiram, there's a big difference between being considered incompetent legally and medically. But perhaps Dr. Larrabee can make them understand how important it is for her not to be disturbed right now. They ought to be willing to wait. Mm, you think so. But these legal things are always pretty cut and dried, Mary. They don't allow much leeway for special circumstances. And I can understand why. Well, of course, they have to see that the law is enforced. But it seems to me that sometimes the spirit of the law is one thing, and the letter another. Hmm. Well, let's hope we can persuade them to follow the spirit in Kit's case. I'm so sure that girl can be brought back to a healthy, normal life. I want so much to see her become the fine person she could be. If only they'll allow Larry to follow through with his treatment. But David Bowman's hopes for his niece's possible rehabilitation were threatened. At that same moment, Dr. Larrabee, the psychiatrist who was treating Kit Calvert, had just taken the telephone from his secretary. It's Joel Craig, the district attorney, the girl has whispered. Now, with a puzzled expression, Dr. Martin Larrabee says, Hello? Larrabee speaking. Hello, Dr. Larrabee. I'd like to talk to you about one of your patients. We have a bit of a problem. Oh, is that so? Well, uh, which patient have you in mind? She's uh, one of your newer patients, I believe. Name of Kit Calvert. Miss Calvert? Oh, well, yes, she came in only day before yesterday. So I understand. Well, what about her, Mr. Craig? You haven't been in Huntsville very long, have you, Dr. Larrabee? Why, no, just a few months. Hmm. Then that probably explains your not knowing. Not knowing what? Look, Dr. Larrabee, we're going to issue an indictment for perjury against that girl. Perjury? I thought you might like to know. Miss Calvert? Yes. But the girl's very ill. She's in no state to answer such a charge. I don't know how ill she is, but I do know that she perjured herself up to the hilt not many months ago in Judge Willoughby's court. It was a custody suit. If you like, you can read the entire transcript of the case. But the point is, we were informed she's here in town, and we'll have to do something about it. We've been looking for her for several months. But look here, Craig, Miss Calvert's a patient of mine. She's in my charge after a severe mental breakdown. What she needs, besides the usual psychiatric treatments and therapy, is complete rest and freedom from any sort of strain. I'm sure I'd feel the same way if I were her doctor, but I'm not. I'm the district attorney of this county, and this case got a lot of publicity. There was a great deal of feeling against Miss Calvert wasn't a very pretty case. We had a lot of inquiries. People have been wondering why something wasn't done. And now that Miss Calvert's back, we'll have to follow through on it. There's no question as to her being guilty, you see. She'll have to account for her perjury. Well, that girl's in no condition to account for anything she did in the past six months. Well, I'm afraid, Dr. Larrabee, there may be some question as to just how ill Miss Calvert actually is. She may be simply suffering from a bad case of guilty conscience. But Dr. Larrabee knew the district attorney's theory was wrong. He knew Kit was genuinely ill. And yet, what could he do? His job was to cure her. But he foresaw obstacles he might not be able to overcome. <laughs> 